Welcome to the Academic Enrichment and Support Center New Tutor Training. My name is Sam Mulberry. I'm the co-director of the Academic Enrichment and Support Center. And today what we're going to do is to start by talking about um, kind of the big picture of what ASK looks like. And I know some of you are going to be tutoring in specific areas, but we think it's important that you have a full sense of what services the ASK office offers and how those services work because Although you may be working in one particular area, you may have the opportunity to connect with students and connect students to other services that we offer. So we want you to have this full picture. Also, since this is your first tutor training in ASK, you may be starting in one area, but many of our tutors go on to end up tutoring in lots of other areas as well. So we wanna make sure that you have a full sense of our ASK services. So to start with, here's the mission statement for the ASK office. ASK's mission is to develop, administer, and evaluate academic support services intended to promote students' academic success. We encourage students to identify their strengths and weaknesses as learners, to observe the connection between their study strategies and their results, and to develop and implement a plan for improvement. Overall, our goal is to help students to become successful independent learners. And because of this, we focus a great deal of our services on the first and second year courses that students are going to be taking because that's when they're really developing as learners a great deal. We also hit students um, as they reach certain milestones in their program. So for example, um, as students become nursing majors in their late second and third year, we end up supporting a lot of students in those courses as well. So here you see some of the faculty and staff who work in the ASK office. These are the folks who work as academic counselors. These folks meet individually with students to help them develop their study skills, to help them improve as learners, to help them work on things like time management, how to take tests, how to take notes better, anything like that, any areas where students might be struggling. These are also the folks who will be in charge of doing individual tutor link up. So if you're gonna be tutoring individually, these are people you might be getting emails from um, with requests to have you start working with the students. So these should be uh, names that you're familiar with, and when you get emails from these folks, you should be looking to respond to them uh, as soon as you can. Another crucially important person here is Vicki Sanford, our office manager. She really is the communication hub for the ASK office. You're gonna hear a lot about communication today and the importance of communication. Whenever you get an email from Vicki, please read it right away, respond as soon as you can, because when something gets sent out to you, we're waiting for your response so we can make the next appropriate move. So please be looking for emails from her and responding to her as soon as you can. As I said, she really is the hub that makes all of ASK work. And we don't want things to get hung up in sort of communication issues. So here's some more faculty who work in the ASK office. And these are folks you might have a little bit more direct contact with. These are the faculty who oversee some of the different tutor centers that we have. So if you're working in math, or the sciences, or computer science, or business, or the writing center, or some of these other places, you may report directly and work directly with one of these faculty members. So it's important that you know who it is that, uh, that you're gonna be working with, and also who are those faculty members who really are invested in ASK services, even outside of your area. The next thing we want to do is sort of familiarize yourself with the ASK services. And again, you might be working in just one part of this, but it's really important as you're working with struggling students that you have a broad sense of what supports are available to students. Our first tier of support comes in drop-in peer tutoring. So these are the tutor centers. Here's where we hope students go first when they're looking for help. So you can see here there's a number of areas, really most of the areas that we do tutoring in are supported by these drop-in services. And with the exception of the writing center, these are all services where students don't need an appointment ahead of time. They can just show up and work with a tutor. So if you're working in one of these help sessions, you're obviously familiar with the services offered there, but it's important to know these other things as well. For example, maybe you're working uh, in the science help sessions and you're tutoring for chemistry and you encounter a student who's really struggling with math. Maybe they're also taking calculus at that time and they might not be aware that along with there being a science help sessions, there's also a math lab. So knowing those other things is gonna be really helpful to sort of route students in those directions. In addition to the drop-in help sessions, we also offer another layer of support. Let's say a student's in a course that's not supported by one of those help sessions, or maybe they're, they are in a course that's supported by one of those help sessions, but their need is so deep. Maybe you're working in math lab and a student's coming in and they're really struggling, not just with how to do the homework or things like that, but they're really struggling with even the concepts of what 
um, what they're doing in that course. And they end up really needing to work kind of directly with you the whole time. And it's hard to work with other students when you're working with them. One of the things you might want to recommend to them is that they come in to the ASK office and seek out individual tutoring. ASK offers tutoring on an individual level. In a minute, we'll talk about the exact process that that works on. But these individual tutor linkups are meeting with the student twice a week for about an hour each time. So it's more direct support, more direct help. And again, it's important that students know that this is really something we offer theoretically for any course that a student's taking here. Um, we, may, we have tutors to cover lots of these areas, but if we, have, if we don't have someone for that area, we'll seek out and try to hire someone uh, for that course. So a student shouldn't feel like they're kind of hemmed in in terms of requesting a tutor uh, just because these are the tutors that we have. We'll hire folks if we need to, uh, if we need to, to meet those needs. And as I said, we'll talk in a minute about the exact, exactly how that process works, both for the student and for you as a tutor. One other set of students that we're really dedicated in trying to support are multilingual students. So along with all the other tutoring that we've already talked about, we also offer some direct support for students who are coming from different language backgrounds and so for whom English might not be their primary language, might not be their first language. Um, we have special writing center support, we have special coursework. Um, to work specifically with these students. So if you encounter a student, let's say you're in CWCTA office hours, or you're in the math lab or science help sessions or the business labs, and the student's a multilingual learner, and they really seem to be struggling, not only with the content for your course, but especially with language things in general, especially writing. Uh, it's helpful for you to know that these services are available so you can route them to those services. The, the easiest way to do that is to have them come by the ASK office and talk with Vicki or talk with one of our counselors about the variety of services that we have for multilingual learners. Another area of support that we offer to students is individual counseling on sort of academics, academic skills, things like that. So when I mentioned earlier those counselors that work out of the ASK office, this is really where they come into play a great deal. So students can meet with one of our academic counselors to talk about a variety of study skills issues and a variety of study skills questions. So students just have to sign up for, uh, come by the office, sign up for an appointment. Um, sometimes these are one-time meetings where we'll talk about um, we'll talk about note taking or test taking or how to um, how to manage your time better, anything like that. Um, so it might be a one time meeting. Sometimes these are meetings that go on um, on kind of an ongoing basis. So there are students that we work with. Um, we'll meet with the entire semester. Maybe we'll meet with them once a week to talk about um, how they're growing as a student, how they're growing in these study skills, how they're growing in time management, those types of things. So really we do that um, kind of depending on what the student needs, what the student is looking for. And all a student needs to do to get connected to those services is just come by the ASK office, fill out a request for help form and sign up for an appointment with one of our counselors. And from there, we can sort of take the reins on that. So if, if you're working with a student and it seems like they have some bigger needs, some bigger issues. Let them know that there are services available to them uh, and have them come in to meet with us uh, and we would love to help them. So it's really important that you're aware that that service is, is, service is available because really in some ways it's a service for you. If you're working with a student who needs some of these bigger helps, you know, you don't need to shoulder all of that burden. We have, uh, we have some uh, faculty counselors who can work with students on those things as well. And a final area of support that we offer is course specific workshops and support. So uh, for certain courses, for certain areas, um, along with doing drop-in tutoring and individual tutoring, um, sometimes faculty or tutors will come in to do workshops to help students review for an exam, to help students after an exam go through that exam and sort of figure out what are things that they could do better to talk about you know, how to effectively study for this specific course, for this specific field, things like that. So we're, we're often working with faculty to try to find other avenues for how we can bring support to students through workshops and things like that. The next thing I want to talk about is the Ask Tutor Link Up process. And this is really an area where you're going to play a major role. Maybe not in the initial part of this process, but at the end of this process, this is where you get linked up working with a student. Uh, and some of you might think of yourselves and say, well, I'm going to be tutoring just in a help session, so I don't really need to know this. And the truth is many of our tutors will start as help session TAs, help session tutors, writing center tutors, things like that. but 
it becomes crucial that you're aware of this process because we may tap you later on to say, hey, you know, you were in this course and did really well. Would you be interested in doing some individual tutoring as well? So we want everyone to kind of be aware of this process because as, as tutors go through their time and ask, oftentimes they see their roles shift. So we want to make sure you, you understand this process very well. So what you see here is the request for help form. So when a student is um, thinking that they need a tutor, um, or if they're referred to come get a tutor, they will come by the ask office, HC324, and fill out this form. And this form gives us information about the student's kind of demographic information, um, gives us some background in terms of where their GPA is at, um, things like that. And then they have a chance to sort of talk about what type of help they're looking for. So they might say, you know, I'm in managerial finance and I'm really struggling in this course, or I'm really struggling in calculus or chemistry or whatever, they'll kind of lay that out there. Um, and then on the back of this form, the student will fill out their schedule. So not only their class schedule, but also their work schedule, any other time commitments, things like that. So students will take the time to fill this form out. It usually takes five to 10 minutes for a student to fill this out. And then when they turn this form in, we'll have them sign up to meet with one of our counselors. So it's important to think about what this whole process looks like. How does a student get from, I need a tutor, to I'm actually sitting down to work with you as a tutor? So the first step, as I said, is to fill out this request for help form, and then to sign up for an appointment to meet with one of our counselors. Now, as a counselor, when I get that form, one of the things that I'll do is, I mean, I'll read through that form, I'll think about what is it that the kind of help that that student needs, and then I'll also get in contact with that student's faculty member. Because as we're considering what types of help a student might need, if a tutor seems appropriate, anything like that, we want to have not only the counselor's input and the student's input, but also the faculty member's input as well. So we will contact the faculty member to get feedback about where things are at with that student. Are there specific helps that they need? Do they think a tutor would be appropriate? Do would they approve of that as, as, as a good next step? Sometimes those um, faculty members really, their first step is to say they really want to meet with the faculty members. So you might, I would always encourage students to talk with their faculty as well. I think that's why you go to a place like Bethel. The next step after all this communication has happened is that the student comes in for their appointment. So when the student comes in to meet with, with one of our counselors, um, then we really get to talk about kind of where things are at. And sometimes as we talk with students, a student might come in and, you know, and say, oh, I'm really just struggling in this class. And what we'll realize is there's actually a, a bigger picture here. There's more help that this student needs. Um, so the counselor has an opportunity to dive in with that. And really what we're trying to do at that point is, is to take the student's comments, the feedback from the from the professor and say what kind of help do they really need and if we determine that the thing that the student really needs is an individual tutor then we will sort of move in that direction and this is where you really get involved in this process because as a counselor if i decide what the student really needs is an individual tutor what i will do is i will send out a tutor request to one of our tutors. And it's important to note that we're only contacting one tutor at a time. So let's say that, that, that we're choosing to send this tutor request to you. What you would get is an email from me or from one of the other counselors that would have all the information about this student, the course that they're in, their contact information, the number of hours per week. It's usually two hours a week. Every once in a while, we'll even start by saying the student needs three hours a week if there's sort of specific issues with that. But usually it's about two hours a week and then any other comments about this. So that'll all be in the email. And then attached to that email is that copy of the student schedule that they, uh, that they filled out. And what we want you to do is we want you to consider this request uh, based on really a couple things. First off, does the student's schedule work out with yours? That's gonna be kind of the biggest thing because if you're this far in the process, you're probably interested in tutoring. You just need to make sure that, that your times and their times line up. Um, so we want you to make a decision based on that, but also to think about like, is this, uh, you know, look at the, who the student is. Is this a student, is this somebody you know? Bethel's a small place. And it's not to say you can't work with someone you know, but if you look at that student's name and say, you know, it would be really awkward to work with that person because I know them really well or something like that, then um, that's perfectly fine. We can move on to, to work with somebody else. So that's information we'd want to know. Um, it's not to say you can't work with someone you know, but if it would be awkward, you know, make sure to let us know and we'll pass that on. So we want you to consider that tutoring job. We hope that you take it. Um, our expectation is if you're signed up to do individual tutoring that you'll take at least one job uh, over the course of the semester. So consider that job. Um, and then the big thing here is communication. 
let us know if you can take that job and let us know as soon as you can. Our hope is for, you know, at, at, at maximum a 24 hour turnaround, but we'd love it to be sooner. Um, when you get that, I think what often happens with students is we get an email and we, you know, we see it's a request and either we respond right away or we sort of let it sit there and then sometimes it sort of falls into the background. So if I don't hear from a tutor within 24 hours, I contact them right away. I contact them again and say, I sent you this request, can you take it or not? And again, my bigger concern is that you communicate right away, not that you have to take the job, but, but I need to know because we only send this out to one tutor at a time. So you need to think about the fact that as you're sitting there considering that job, that that student is waiting. So the sooner you can make a decision and let us know, the better. Along with letting us know whether you're gonna take the job, the other key thing you should do is contact the, the student right away. Even if you can't meet with them immediately, sending them an email so they know, I have a tutor, this is the person that I'm gonna work with, that relieves a lot of that initial stress that they have. And remember, anybody who's coming in to, to work, with, uh, work with a tutor, they're already probably a little stressed about this course. There's a lot of anxiety kind of surrounding this. So I would say as soon as you can, try to contact that student, set up that initial meeting time. Again, you have their schedule, so you can propose a meeting time that looks like it should work on their schedule and that works for you. And then from there, the two of you can set up what your regular schedule is gonna look like. Uh, but I think that's sort of a really important piece here. On the other hand, if you can't take the tutoring job, again, please contact us right away because then our next step is when we hear back from you saying you can't take the job, that then we send that on to the next tutor. So this is where that communication loop becomes really important because if you sit on that, on that request for a day or two or three, it's not getting sent out to the next tutor. So all of a sudden that student can be waiting for a week to, to, meet, with a, to meet with a tutor. So when you get that request, let us know right away We'll keep working to find somebody who can take the job, but we need to know from you that you can't before we can send it off to somebody else. So communication, rapid communication, is the way that Ask is gonna work best. So one of the forms next to this video on Moodle that's worth looking at right now is the Tutor 2T guidelines. Now I think it's important to note that we go through the, these guidelines with a student, any student who's gonna be working with a tutor, when we sit down and meet with them, we go through these guidelines. So you can assume the student has seen these. It doesn't mean that they know them really, really well, but they have seen them once. Um, and it's important that you know the guidelines, both the guidelines for the student, what are the expectations of the student, but also what are the expectations on you as a tutor. So I'm not gonna read through all of these. You have the form, you can look over the, this, but I wanna highlight a few of these items. So the first thing I wanna say is something I've already said and we'll probably say it again is communicate, communicate, communicate. So um, please respond to any emails from the Ask Office within 24 hours. Make sure you're checking your email at least once a day. Um, and when you get those emails, just respond right away if you can, because that's gonna make that communication loop happen faster and better. Next, once you're linked up with an individual 2T, uh, have a regular meeting schedule. Uh, it's really important that, that there's regular meetings so students know when and where they're gonna be meeting on that regular basis. Uh, and I, that also helps keep the student accountable. One of the things that we've noticed over the years is that students will come in asking for a tutor. They'll come in sort of requesting this support, but oftentimes those students are so busy, their, their time is so leveraged that, that they struggle to meet with the tutor, which is a big problem because they need the tutors to, um, to succeed in the class. So make sure if you have that regular schedule, that's gonna make it easier for that student to build it into their life. It's a lot trickier for them and for you if each week you're kind of figuring out, okay, well, next week, when can we meet? Next week, when can we meet? If you can have them build it into their routine, that's gonna make showing up for that meeting much easier for them, and it's gonna mean that they're gonna make use of you as a tutor uh, to a far greater degree. Next, immediately inform us if any issues arise. And this could be any number of things. If you notice that the 2T is um, not showing up for, for, uh, for appointments or is canceling on you a lot, or if they're showing up but they seem really underprepared, it seems like, wow, they've never done any of the reading, they've never started any of the homework, let us know that. We can work to prod them on. This is part of those guidelines for working with the tutors. They're supposed to be doing those things. If they're not doing that, let us know right away because we can work to prod that student on. 
Um, let us know if there are any other issues that arise as well. I mean, we want to be involved. We want to make this a really positive experience for you as a tutor. We want to make this a positive experience for the student. We want to make sure that what's happening is effective. Um, so you, so please let us know. We're, we have some communication pieces built in. After a few weeks, we have you um, meet with one of us. We have you fill out a form so we can sort of see how things are going. We do that with the student as well. Uh, but you don't need to wait for those things. If there are problems that arise, if there are things that need to be addressed, please let us know. Either come by the Ask office and talk with Vicki or talk with one of us counselors or email us. Let us know. Get us in that communication loop and then we can work to fix those things. So please, please, please let us know if problems arise. Next, when you have those meetings with students, make sure that you're on time, that you're reliably on time. Try to get there a little bit early so the student can be looking for you, so you can get started right away. Um, so be reliable, be on time. That's gonna be a huge thing uh, for the student. And when you sit down to meet with the student, give them your undivided attention. Try to pick a, a place and a time when you know you're not gonna be distracted. Put your phone away, have the student put their phone away. You only, they only get so much time to meet with you, right? They're only meeting with you twice a week for about an hour each time, so they wanna maximize that. And you wanna be able to maximize their attention. So try to think about what those distractions might be and try to get those things out of the way. So give the student your undivided attention. Uh, remember that, I mean, when you're working with the student, you're at work, right? So, so, uh, so if you're doing that, if you're trying to avoid any of those distractions, both for you or for the student, that's gonna be a really effective thing. Next, it's important to talk with your 2T about what's the best way to communicate with each other. Have a system for if sort of emergencies arise. So if, if the, something happens and the, the student can't make a meeting, they know what's the best way to get a hold of you. And likewise, if something happens in your life and you, I mean, you have this meeting scheduled and let's say you're driving to Bethel and you get a flat tire and you know you're not gonna make it, know what's the best way to communicate with that 2T so they know that you're not gonna make it or that you're gonna need to reschedule. So have some system in place to say, here's how, here's how I'm gonna communicate with you, here's how you should communicate with me. So you don't need to give them all of your contact info, but give them um, some way that they can communicate with you that you know is gonna be effective and efficient uh, when those emergencies arise. Lastly, and I've already talked a little bit about this, but if the student is consistently not showing up for, um, for appointments with you, let us know. Um, make sure you put on your timesheet, we'll, we'll pay you for 15 minutes of sitting and waiting for that student, but if that happens more than once, let us know. Um, we don't want you to be sort of wasting your time just working with a student who doesn't want to meet with you. Um, we really would rather not spend the money to pay a tutor to meet with a student who doesn't want to meet with them. Um, and we can work with that student because maybe this, their schedule that they told us really isn't as accurate as as it is in fact. So, um, so let us know, let us be part of that process as well. Um, again, you don't need to wait for us to ask you questions about that. If there's things like that that aren't working well, let us know right away and we, we can work to fix those things. One last word about your role as an Ask Tutor. Um, remember that when you're working, yes, you're working with peers, right? You're a peer tutor, so you're working with students who are sometimes in the same classes as you, same, roughly the same age as you, uh, things like that, but when you're working as an ASK tutor, remember that you're at work. The student you're working with is not, but you are, right? So have this in the back of your head that, I mean, this is really, you have professional duties when you're working with, uh, with these students. Really, you are an agent of Bethel. You are, you know, you're the hands and feet and face of Bethel at that moment, and think about that when you're working with the student. So those interactions should be professional interactions. This is practice and preparation for you when you leave college and enter the workforce and do other professional work. I mean, this is a chance to sort of exercise some of those skills. So I know, I mean, our hope is that you really do build friendships with these students that you're working with, but it's important to remember at the same time that these tutor interactions are professional interactions. So have that in the back of your head, you know, that, 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 that time when you're on the clock, when you're working in help sessions, when you're working individually with a student, that those really are times that, um, that you should be thinking of yourself as on duty, as being a professional. So when you're working in the help sessions, you know, that really is probably not a great time for you to sit and do your, your homework, even if there's nobody working with you right away. Like, you should at least make sure you have an eye on the door when that student comes in 
greet them, make sure they're getting the help that they need, make sure that that you're um, getting you're fo- getting your focus on them. Um, and, and that you're thinking about your professional duties. Uh, every once in a while, I mean, some of this stuff is kind of obvious to say, but every once in a while we, we sort of find lapses in our services where, um, where students aren't, do, where our tutors aren't doing that. So just, it's, it's a way to, it's something to remind yourself of, it's something to remind other tutors of as you're working as well, that, that really you're supposed to be modeling what it means to be a good student to them. Um, and your professionalism is really a big, uh, a big part of that. I want to end by giving you two numbers or two two sort of facts about uh, about Ask Services, um, and this is really to help think about how do we communicate what Ask is to both the students that we work with and the students that we could potentially work with. And the first is that in a given year, the Ask Office averages somewhere between thirteen thousand and fifteen thousand student contacts. Now, let's make sense out of that number. So that's contacts with any of the services that we offer, any of the services that we talked about, uh, that we talked about earlier in this training. That means that the average Bethel student ends up working with ASK, whether it's an individual tutor, whether it's the help sessions, whether it's working with one of our counselors, they end up working with ASK on average about four and a half times per year. So a lot, this is a high volume, a high usage um, set of services. And why that's important is because sometimes students feel like there's a stigma about using academic support, using tutoring, asking for help, anything like that. And what this number shows me is that this is actually a very normal thing to do. Um, so I think that that's a good number to know as you're talking with students, as you're communicating with them, to sort of fight some of that stigma about like, you know, it doesn't mean I'm dumb if I have to use a tutor or if I have to come in and ask for help. Not at all. I mean, these are services that that really everybody's using here. Another way to think about these usage numbers is to say, how many unique users do we have? Because I mean, yes, we could have 13,000 to 15,000 student contacts, but maybe that's like 100 people, you know, all coming 150 times or something like that. Um, but that's not the case. That's not likely, and that's not the case. So, so we went back to figure out how many unique users did we have in a given year. And what we found is it was around 1,150 unique users in a given year. That equates to about 44% of the Bethel population. So around half of Bethel students are using Ask Services in a given year. So sometimes um, when I'm doing events with parents or admissions events, things like that, someone will ask me, you know, what, what kind of student uses Ask? What type of student uses Ask? Who uses Ask? And what I try to tell them is that the student that uses Ask is a Bethel student, right? I mean, half of our students um, are using Ask. On average, all of our students use it four and a half times uh, per year. So lots of students, high volume. Uh, we know that half of our students aren't failing Bethel, right? Half of our, a lot of our, most of our students do really well. So students who are doing well. I mean, if you think about it, think about yourself as a tutor. When you were in your first year at Bethel, did you use ASK? Did you go to Math Lab or the Science Help Sessions or the CWCTAs or the Writing Center? There's a good chance that a lot of you did. A lot of our tutors are people who also used our services. And I think that is really, um, that really speaks well of the services that, that we offer uh, and both the quality that we offer and the, the quantity, the amount of different services that we offer. Um, so I'm really proud of these numbers that, that lots of students use it and lots of students use it again and again and again. So we, that's a tradition we hope to continue. And I think those are important numbers to know as you're talking with students who are kind of wrestling with that, the difficulty of coming in and asking for help. Well, that ends this session of our Ask Tutor training. If you have questions about Ask Services, about the tutor link up process, um, about anything that we talked about today, please don't hesitate to come by the Ask office. You can meet with one of our directors, one of our counselors, you can meet with our office manager. Um, we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions you have, fill in any gaps that this training left. Um, we're excited uh, to work with you this semester. We're excited to provide really great academic support to the students that are here at Bethel, to the students who need that, that support. And we can't thank you enough for being involved in providing that support. You really are a key piece of making Bethel work. I was going to say making academic support at Bethel work, but really making Bethel work. I mean, we have around 150 to 200 tutors who work out of the ASK office in a given year, and you provide essential support for keeping Bethel running. So I want to start by thanking you for that, um, and I'm excited to work with you.